Kia internet. A while back my mother gave me a crafting request and I'm going to finally get round to it today. She has a cat named Raji who is a big fluffy, I can't remember what breed he is, exotic I think, but big and fluffy and he has a cat bed and that cat bed is a little bit too small for him so he kind of struggles to fit in the cat bed. So she asked me if I could make a cat bed just a little bit bigger so that he's still nicely contained because cats like to be enclosed but not so squashed as he is in his current one. So I've got this fluffy fabric and I'm going to try and make a cat bed. I have watched a video from of oh, this fluff coming off this fabric is flying everywhere. I have watched a video from I think it was from man sewing on how to make a dog bed. So I think I can probably just follow that but just make the sizes a little bit smaller. And yeah, let's see how it goes. This is what I'm going to use for the underside of the bed. I patched it together from some scraps of linen that I had left over from a cushion I made a while back. It doesn't really matter what goes on the base because it's going to be underneath the bed anyway, but might as well use something nice. I want the base to be roughly circular, about 16 inches across I think. The original bed was about 12 inches internal diameter, so I think 16 inches by the time the walls take up some space should leave me with about 13-14 inches on the inside, which is about what Raji needs. I'm going to cut another circle from the fur fabric to match the base circle. For the walls, I need a strip of fabric which is the same length as the circumference of the base. So we need to do some maths. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, or pi times the diameter. So for a diameter of 16 inches, that works out at about 50 and a quarter inches. I'm going to add in another couple inches just for wiggle room and because I'm pretty certain this is not an actual circle. So I'm going to cut this strip 52 inches long and I'll make it 12 inches wide which should give me enough space to get my hand inside when I'm stuffing it. I'm going to be making the tube for the walls and sewing them to the base all in one step. So I'm folding the strip in half wrong sides together. The seams are all going to be contained inside the base at the end so they don't actually need to be on the inside of the tube. together once it's on the base and once I know exactly how long it needs to be. So for now I'm just going to leave a section unsewn at each end of the tube.
the tube is sewn to the base, I can see how much overlap I've got and trim it down so that I've just got enough room for probably a half inch seam allowance. Quarter inch is a bit optimistic given how fluffy this fabric is. <laughs> join the two ends of the tube right sides together but I also need to leave an opening for the stuffing. So I worked out the easiest way to do that is to sew a few inches together at each end of the strip but leave the middle part still open and then continue sewing the tube onto the base. I think that makes sense. actually starting to look like a cat bed. Now that the top is complete I need to add that bottom part that I made out of the linen. That's going to hide all of the raw edges. The top and bottom will need to go together right sides together leaving a gap for turning of course. So I need to tuck all of the wall parts out the way so they don't get sewn into the seam. needed 
turn it inside out, stuff the walls in the base, and then hand sew everything closed. fabric scraps and batting scraps and things like that for stuffing the walls because I want them to be pretty firm so that they'll stand up. It's a good thing I never throw out any scraps isn't it? just stuff lightly with some polyfill just to make a nice soft cushion for Raji to sit on. the finished cat bed it's a uh, very puffy <laughs> hopefully the weight of the cat will push it down a little bit because otherwise the walls are kind of pointless because the the middle part <laughs> comes up above the walls but I think it should work I tried to get parsnips to sit on it to test it out and she's a cat she's not going to cooperate with anything if I tell her to sit somewhere that's going to be the last place she wants to sit but you know, if Raji doesn't like it, well, it's, it took me a couple of hours to make, so it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Hopefully he will enjoy it though. Hopefully he'll appreciate his new cat bed. But as Raji is also a cat, chances are he'll go and sleep in his old cat bed and ignore his nice new one. <laughs> My hand stitching isn't the best. You can probably see quite clearly where I stitched the main seam closed. This fluffy material is not the easiest stuff to hand stitch on. I think I needed a bigger needle. The good news is though, um, it's pretty forgiving in that it's, the fluff covers over most of the stitching, so it could be worse. <laughs> and on the back, on the base it's just got some old linen material that I had some leftover bits of so it's kind of a, a pieced back <laughs> but that's going to be on the ground so no one's ever going to see that part anyway but I wanted to make it slightly pretty well mum I hope you like it Raji I hope you like it I hope you're watching this video Raji <laughs> Don't forget to do all those nice internety things like liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time. Kakiti ano internet.